thank you for coming here today. Thank you to the people who organized this to bring such a wonderful crew tonight. Almost everything they teach us about the ancient history is wrong. <laughs> yes. The origin of man, civilizations, and pyramids. They tell us that the pyramids were built in Egypt and Mexico. Wrong. That's just the beginning. They were built on all six continents. They tell us that Egyptian pyramids were used as the tombs for pharaohs. Wrong. In the biggest and most superior pyramids, the pharaohs were never, never buried. They are telling us about the Mexican pyramids, that they were built as the ceremonial centers to sacrifice the enemy. Again, wrong. That was the case only with the most recent Aztecs pyramid. In the 21st century, we will need to put the current scientific paradigm behind us. After 200 years of Egyptology, this is what they are telling us. Egyptologists are saying that this was the first pyramid built on Egyptian soil, the famous step pyramid in Saqqara. They are saying it was built by the Pharaoh Joseph 4,000 700 years ago. However, under the pyramid, the network of tunnels was discovered. And the ceramic dishes. And they are dated back to 5,800 years before present. Or 1,200 years before the third dynasty pharaoh Joseph or 800 years before pharaonic Egypt. So who built this pyramid? Then Egyptologists are saying that the pharaoh Snefer, the last one of the third dynasty, built not one, but three colossal pyramids. They are saying this was the first one, the famous bent pyramid in Dashur. But then, Egyptologists are saying he was not happy with this one. So he built another one, a beautiful red pyramid across the Bent Pyramid. Now, when you enter the Red Pyramid, the passageways don't have any paintings. The chambers are empty. No mummies, no tools. No hieroglyphic writings, no symbols, not a single proof who really built this pyramid. Now, Egyptologists are saying Pharaoh Sneferu was not happy with the second pyramid. So he built the third one, the Step Pyramid in Meidum, 100 miles to the south. And again, inside this pyramid, we don't find any proofs who really built it. It seems that the Pharaoh Sneferu was a very hard man to satisfy. <laughs> the passageways empty, the chambers also. And then Egyptologists are saying the Pharaohs of the fourth dynasty, the Pharaoh Hufu or Cheops, Kephren, and my seven, father, son, and grandson, supposedly built three most famous pyramids of all on the Giza Plateau. But then again, from the outside, we can see only the stones, no banners stating who really built them. Inside, magnificent passageways, huge chambers, with the granite blocks of 80 tons. In Kefren pyramid, 220 tons. But no mummies, no bones, no organic material, no hieroglyphic writings. We don't know who really built those pyramids. But what we do know 
is that a lot of mathematical, astronomical, and geometrical knowledge has been incorporated in those structures. For example, the Great Pyramid of Egypt has the square base. The length of the sides at the base is 232 meters, or approximately 700 feet. So, when we add two sides, 232 plus 232, 464 meters, and divide by its height of 147, the result is 3.14, which is another pi. According to the Egyptologists, in another 2,000 years after the Pharaoh Khufu, this number will not be known to the humanity. Also, the golden ratio, the number 5, is incorporated into this structure. The distance between our planet and the sun is here. The distance between our planet and the moon is there. The number 299,000, which is the speed of light. And they are telling us that during the pharaonic Egypt, when they had only primitive copper tools and the wooden sticks, <laughs> they were able to build something that we cannot in the 21st century. 224 pyramids in the former Nubian Kingdom, today's northern Sudan. The African continent, we just visited northeastern part, Egypt and Sudan. But the pyramids are built all around the continent, to the north, the islands of Sicily and Sardinia, to the west, on Canary Islands, to the east, on the island of Mauritius. Not a single word about those in our history books, in our encyclopedias, not even on internet. 43 stepstone pyramids on the island of Sicily. We don't know who built them. We do know that we have volcanic stone used, that the cornerstones are nicely shaped on both sides. They are stepped in designs, four triangular faces. We go to the other side of Africa, the Canary Islands. The biggest one is Tenerife. On the eastern coast of the island, next to the town of Guimar, there are dozens of pyramids. When you see them, you can see their sides are triangular. There are four sides, design is step. Volcanic stone has been used. Cornerstones have been shaped on both sides. The stairways on the western side leads you to the top of the plateau and during the summer solstice, the sun is rising exactly in the middle of the plateau. So it's obvious it's eastern orientation. When I had my lecture at La Laguna University in the city of uh, Tenerife, I asked professors at the universities if they visited Goimar pyramids. They said, well, we were in Goimar, but according to the Spanish scientific community, these are not pyramids. These are just pile of rocks <laughs> made by farmers while they were cleaning the area to plant the agriculture. <laughs> I told them, of course, they are not pile of rocks. I mean, you can see the plan, you can see four sides, you can see all these features. They got upset. The problem with academia is their fear. Everything is based on fear. What is the real problem with the Spanish scientific community? 550 years ago, when the Spanish conquerors were sailing to the west, to Central and South America, to conquer all those lands, Canary Islands and Tenerife were the first ones to be attacked. At that time, on the island, very advanced culture called Guanche lived there. They were building stone cities, stone pyramids, stone temples, irrigation channels. But they did not have military because they had no enemy. They were on the island. The Spanish 
wipe them off the face of the planet over the next few decades. And today, in order to justify those acts, they are saying, oh, Guanches, they were very primitive, caveman people. So they falsified the history. If you want to say something the contrary, then you got a problem. So, once I talked to those professors, and when they got upset, they never showed up at my lecture at the university. But 350 students did. <laughs> they wanted to hear the truth. So when I finished, I got the standing ovation. We go on the other side of the African continent, the island of Mauritius, 3,000 miles away from the African continent, in the middle of the Indian Ocean. According to every book, encyclopedia. This island was not inhabited until the 16th century. And then the white Europeans came from Spain, Portugal, Italy, Holland, UK. Now, today the island is covered by sugar cane fields. They reach 13 feet in height. You go through those dense fields and you can see the stone structures. You climb the top or one of them, and you got a beautiful view of the pyramids. Seven of them. Four-sided pyramids. Plateau on the top, stepped in design, the same height of the step, the same width of the step. Cornerstones, nicely shaped. The orientation, this, eastern side, during the summer solstice. And summer solstice on this island is December 21st, because it is on southern hemisphere. The sun is rising exactly in the middle of this flat plateau. So, once me and my wife Sabina, who I called three in one, my love, my partner, and my wife, where is she? She in the back, or oh, she's smoking? Okay, she's smoking. <laughs> we did all the measurements. We sent our report to the government of Mauritius. And uh, we suggested them to investigate those pyramids together, because not a single word about them in the you know, history books. Then they sent me an email back. They were saying, Dr. Osmananich, we don't have pyramids. What you are referring to, they're just a pile of rocks made by local farmers while de-rocking the area in order to plant sugarcane fields hundreds of years ago. Now, what is their problem? Like I said, according to all encyclopedias, this island was not inhabited until the 16th century. Of course, the white Europeans never built pyramids. So who did? In order to answer that question, they would need to change their history. The governments don't like to change the histories. We had a press conference at the island. The next day, the most popular daily called the Express had a big article about our press conference laughing at me, saying, oh, this Bosnian wants to reinvent our history. But we know very well that we don't have pyramids. <laughs> <coughs> the Mayan civilization built over 10,000 pyramids in what we call today countries of Mexico, Guatemala, El Salvador, Honduras, and Belize. This one in uh, Tikal, northern Mayan city in the uh, province of Petén, in Guatemala, was considered the highest, 300 feet. In the meantime, six years ago, in another big Mayan city called El Mirador, in the middle of the jungle was discovered with a pyramid over 340 feet in height. Palenque, one of the most beautiful Mayan cities 
in Mexico, in the state of Chiapas. Tens of step stone pyramids were uncovered from the jungle, but more than 80% of the city is still covered by soil and the wood. City of Copan in Western Honduras is the most artistic Mayan city. This is the biggest pyramid. 1987 and to 1989, the archaeologists from Honduras and the US were cleaning the walls of the pyramids, removing the roots. And then they discovered that inside the pyramid, 700 years old temple was located. So in this particular case, the pyramid served as the protection for something even more sacred. Now they call this temple Rosalila, due to its rose color. The ornaments above the door are showing the symbol for the solar system, the red one, and above the white one, the symbol for the center of the galaxy, that Mayans called Hunab Ku. Now, to the left and to the right, to the left and to the right, as we can see behind this handsome guy, <laughs> we have something that looks like a vehicle with the wheels, body of the vehicle, and the cabin. And inside the cabin, the Mayan face with their characteristic big noses. So we have those two vehicles between the symbols for the solar system and the center of the galaxy. The message is obvious. They somehow travel between our solar system and the center of Milky Way. <coughs> really, how did man have such a vast knowledge of astronomy? We got only five books left behind them, the famous Mayan codexes. The first one to be deciphered partially was Dresden Codex, 140 years ago. The similar symbolism was in the book, solar system, center of the galaxy, and the number close to 26,000 years. At that time, the scientists had no clue what Mayans were saying. <coughs> Today we do know, because our knowledge, level of knowledge rose. We know that the Mayans knew that our solar system <coughs> moves within our galaxy, and it takes almost 26,000, 25,920 years, for one full circle, which, by the way, ends on December 21st of this year. Belize, the tiny Central American country, former British Honduras, had 1,000 Mayan cities, towns, and villages. And every one of them would have several pyramids. Most of them still covered by vegetation, some of them partially reconstructed. The same thing in El Salvador. Only four Mayan cities are open for public. This is one of them, San Andres. Pyramids covered by soil and grass. Some of them partially uncovered. The Cucucan Pyramid is the most famous Mayan pyramid in eastern Mexico, Chichen Itza. What we can see today after the reconstruction are the four stairways, 91 step each, 4 times 91, 364. You add platform on the top, 365, which is the number of days in our solar calendar. A lot of astronomical knowledge has been incorporated here as well. The step pyramid, almost the same design like in Chichen Itza, but this time 8,000 miles to the east. Koh Ker Pyramid in Cambodia, about 50 miles to the east from the famous Angkor Wat. We continue to the east, 
Korean Peninsula, three stepstone pyramids, again, volcanic stone. Fifty years ago, that salesman, that salesman, <laughs> landed in Tahiri, and they discovered a huge stepstone pyramid with a rectangular base, 85 feet by 260 feet. The pyramids are built on the island of Java, Indonesia, Kandisukuh pyramid, four sides, temple on the top. The Chinese pyramids have been secret for the outside world for the longest time. 1966, the Chinese archaeologists who were investigating them was at the international conference in Japan. And then he said that the pyramids do exist on Chinese soil. And he discovered some clay tablets with hieroglyphic writings. And after he partially deciphered them, he claimed that those pyramids were built over 12,500 years ago. When he went back to China, 1967, they put him in the mental hospital. <laughs> and nobody heard about him anymore. 1967 is the year of the famous cultural revolution in China. So for the next 15 years, whoever claims something against the mainstream truth would have a problem. The end of 1960s and 1970s, the Chinese government was planting the trees on the top of their pyramids, wanted to hide them from the outside world. Because according to them, the Chinese history is only 5,000 years and advanced Chinese cultures, 2,500 years old. According to them, everything started with the Emperor Qin, who built the great Chinese wall, the great Chinese civilization, and now we have something over 12,000 years. So, only in 1990s, they started cleaning some of the soil from the small pyramids. But even, due, even uh, with their efforts to hide the pyramids, they were able to locate all 250 pyramids in the central Chinese province of Shanxi. 20 big ones and 230 small ones. The big ones are really superior because they are built from the granite and sandstone blocks, and the small ones from the mud brick. It seems that they wanted to make a replica of the bigger ones, but they did not have a knowledge or the engineering skills. Interestingly enough, we got the same situation in Egypt. The oldest pyramids are the most superior ones, built from a, you know, a limestone and granite. But also, the Egyptian pharaohs of the 12th and 18th dynasty, they were building pyramids, but from the mud brick. Today, we can't see those pyramids anymore because they are so inferior. There is a gap between those two civilizations. The first one, over 12,000 years, and the second one, 4,000, 5,000, 3,000 years in the past. I was talking to the leading Chinese archaeologists and they were telling me, once I asked them why they don't investigate the big ones, they said we don't have a permit from the Chinese government. And they are telling us that only the next generation of Chinese scientists will be able to investigate those. So the biggest ones are still covered in soil and vegetation. If they are cleaned, we could see four sides, triangular faces, plateau on the top, and the perfect orientation to the cardinal points, east, 
west, north, and south. The South American soil, Bolivia, 13,000 feet above the sea level, next to the lake Titicaca, the Acapena Pyramid Complex, step stone pyramids. For their construction, granite was used. Today, we can see pyramids, we can see just the soil and grass, and those granite blocks laying around. The guy who spent the most time investigating those was a German Bolivian mathematician and archaeologist called Poznansky. After 50 years, he concluded that those pyramids were built 17,000 years ago. Now, according to the official history that they served us, our history is only 8,000 years old. According to them, everything started with Sumer, then Babylon, and Akkad, and Assyria, and ancient Egypt, and ancient India. In, rea in reality, that's just the last cycle of humanity. Before that one, there was another one. And we are finding the material proof for those civilizations. When we look at those granite blocks, we can see how they perfectly fit each other. With the laser straight, laser flat surfaces, which we can use today as the instruments. And some of the blocks that are obviously machined. In order to shape granite, which is the hardest material in the nature, you don't use copper tools, as the archaeologists are suggesting us. Copper is inferior to the granite. You cannot use inferior material to shape superior material. Today, we use diamond tools to shape granite. So who had diamond tools, lasers, and machines 17,000 years ago? Southern Peru, the area of Cabachi. Seven years ago, when I first visited the place, which is about 50 miles to the south, from the famous Nazca Lines. Italian archaeologists told me that they discovered three step pyramid. Three years ago, when I went again, now they are saying there are 34 pyramids. The question is, who built this city of pyramids? Everything they tell us about it is wrong. They call it Sun City. We don't know its real name. They are saying it was built by the Nazca culture. But in reality, culture by that name never existed. There is a modern Nazca town, though. They are telling us that uh, the city was built 1,800 years ago. I asked them if they found any organic material. They said yes. They found the bone that belonged to the female person. And the age of the bone is 4,500 years. So I asked them, how is it possible to find the bone, which is 4,500 years old, in the structure which is only 1,800 years old? <laughs> Their problem is that the mainstream scientists are saying that advanced cultures in Peru are only 3,000 years old. So it goes beyond what is accepted by the mainstream scientists. So they need to change their history, and they don't like that. We go to the north of this beautiful country, the area of Tukume. 250 pyramids. They are all built from adobe bricks. If you remove a little bit of this desert dust, you will find the walls millions of adobe bricks. Now, on all pyramids, 
including the biggest one, the Pyramid of the Sun, we can see the vertical erosion. Obviously, the erosion is there due to the fact that the pyramids were exposed to the storms and rains for a very long time. Officially, they are saying those pyramids are about 1,800 years old. But the climate in this area has been the same for 7,000 years. Dry desert, no rains. So when did we have those rains? 7,000, 8,000, 12,000, 55,000 years ago? And when the pyramids were built? This is the biggest pyramid on the South American soil. It's called Huaca del Sol, the Pyramid of the Sun. 140 million of the adobe bricks are used to build this structure. But there's just one third of the original size. In the 1520s, when the Spanish conquerors were coming to this area, they faced this colossal structure. Of course, their only goal was to get inside and find some treasures. So what they did, they moved the nearby river, Moche, to the pyramids. And the water removed about two-thirds of the structure. But even what we have today is impressive. Its base is equivalent to six football stadiums. Now, across this one is another one, Huaca de la Luna, the Pyramid of the Moon, another 150 million of tons of bricks, 300 million. According to the archaeologists, it took 30,000 people 300 years to build this complex. And we have two problems there. The first one, for 3,000 people, you would need to have a city of 100,000 people so they can build those pyramids. And in the area, only two houses were unearthed from the ancient times. <laughs> and the second problem, even if they found those cities, why would somebody start building a complex that would take 300 years and the grandchildren of their grandchildren will not see the completion of the complex. The city of Tula, according to every history book, it was the capital of the Toltecs. Three pyramids have been reconstructed. Now, According to Toltecs, their origin was from east, from the red land on the east. Now, east from Mexico is the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. On the top of one of them, they have eight stone columns, which they called Atlanteans. Every column shows the face of people from different continents and different races. <coughs> now, this was capital of Toltec civilization from the 8th century. How come they knew about different races from different continents 800 years before the white Europeans will sail from Europe to Central America and start communication? They are teaching us that only in the 16th century the communication between the continents started. Well, they are teaching us wrong. The communication was there not thousands, but tens of thousands of years in the past. So we need to change our history books. Monte Alban in Mexico is the second biggest ceremonial center on this country's soil. The builders flattened the top 
of the mountain. So from one end to another, the difference is just half of one inch. Half an inch. And then they built the city of pyramids. Some of them have been cleaned and reconstructed. Some of them they are still very better times and more money to be clean. This is the look of the most famous pyramid in Central America, the Pyramid of the Sun in the city of Kukan, 150 years ago. Completely covered by soil, bushes, vegetation. The hills like this, on the first side, there are thousands in Europe, everywhere. Well, it took 75 years and the three archaeological campaigns for American and Mexican archaeologists to completely clean it. <coughs> this is its look in 1960. And this is how it looks like today. One of the most beautiful examples of the pyramid architecture. When you look from the bottom of the pyramid to the people who are climbing the top, they're getting so tiny. And, it's <laughs> and it seems that the pyramid builders wanted to reach the sky with this structure. And indeed, 74 meters, or about 225 feet in height. Interestingly enough, the Great Pyramid of Egypt is exactly two times higher. The base of this pyramid is square. The base of Great Pyramid of Egypt is square. The length of the sides of the base, 232 meters. In Egypt, the same thing, 232 meters. Now, we already learned that number pi, 3.14, is incorporated in the case of Great Pyramid of Egypt. And here, we have square root of number pi. Three big pyramids on Giza Plateau, three big pyramids in the city of Teotihuacan. Cheops, Kefren, Maseren, Sun, Moon, Quetzalcoatl. And their layout is exactly the same. Now they are telling us there was no communication between Africa and Central America 4,500 years ago. Of course it was. Here we can see the signature of the same architect. The pyramids on U.S. soil, well, they did not teach my son about them in Houston. We have not one, but 200 of pyramids here on U.S. soil. Southwestern part of state of Illinois is the home for pyramids. This is the largest one. It's called Monk's Mound. Its surface is 11% larger than the Great Pyramid of Egypt. Everything they tell us about this complex is wrong. <laughs> Mark, the leading archaeologist, was telling me that this city was called Sun City. We don't know its real name. He's telling us that the pyramid complex was built by Mississippians. Never in history, culture by that name existed. He's telling us that Indian tribes built those pyramids. Tribes did not have a social organization to build such a huge structures. And they're telling us that these are mounds. Now, mound is something when you use dirt. But this is not the case. We have four different types of construction materials. We have sandstone blocks, we have pebbles and rocks and sand. 
And when they would complete the pyramid, they would cut squares of grass and soil, turn them upside down and cover those structures. In order to build this pyramid, they needed an equivalent of 224,000 trucks. 20 ton trucks, 50,000 pounds trucks for one. And millions of tons for 200 of them. Indian tribes. <laughs> All the pyramids are oriented to the cardinal points, east, west, north, and south. North, cosmic north, the location of the northern star. Builders who know the orientation of the cosmic north, they're not primitive tribes, they are advanced culture. All the pyramids, but one, the biggest one. That one had orientation to the magnetic north. Now, the difference between cosmic and magnetic is that cosmic is more or less fixed. Even though we do change northern stars every six or twelve thousand years. But magnetic north moves every year. And last year it moved about 28 miles between Canada and Siberia and back. Builders who know the difference between cosmic north and magnetic north are not tribes but advanced civilizations. I asked Mark if they did some digging inside, if they discovered the tunnels, if they found the underground passageways, he said, well, we did not do any archaeological digging recently. I said, why? He said, well, first of all, it's very hard to get the permit. And secondly, he said, it's very expensive. Very expensive for the only remaining superpower on the planet? <laughs> 16 pyramids on the soil of ancient Greece. Hundreds of years before the ancient Greek civilization. The pyramids of Gaius Chestius in the downtown Rome, 2020 years old, but much more important are five pyramidal complexes on Italian soil. This is one of them, called Monte Vecchia Pyramids. Three pyramids are still covered by soil and vegetation. What we can see, besides their colossal side, is the layout here, bottom left, which is exactly the same like the layout of Pyramids on the Giza Plateau, one, two, three, which is exactly the same like the layout of the pyramids in the city of Teotihuacan, one, two, three, which is almost the same like those three stars in Orion Belt. This is the look and the view of the Pyramid of the Moon. In the city of Teotihuacan, 150 years ago, after 75 years of cleaning, this is what we have today. Every day, 20 to 50,000 tourists visit this site. And they leave about $5 billion to Mexican economy. Every year, 8 million tourists visit Egyptian pyramids, leading $15.5 billion to Egyptian economy. So, the pyramids and the archaeological tourism has become the engine for the economies of those countries. And after this short introduction, <laughs> The biggest and the oldest of all. The Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. We've just learned that the pyramids have nothing to do with the pharaohs and the tombs. The pyramids are constructions, architectures, geometry. Traveling and investigating 
this phenomena all around the world, I concluded that we have to have seven elements fulfilled to call something a pyramid. The first one is geometry. You have to have geometry of the pyramids. You have to have one, two, three, four sides. You have to have triangular faces, one, two, three, four. You have to have obvious corners. The second element is the orientation. For some reason, all Chinese pyramids are oriented to the north. The oldest Egyptian pyramids, north. Most Peruvian pyramids, north. Cahokia pyramids, north. The same thing here. This is north. The third element is the construction material. Obviously, artificial construction material. In Guatemala, they shaped volcanic stones. In Peru, they used, they were making adobe bricks. In Egypt, limestone and granite. And here, as we will see, the pyramid is completely covered by artificially made concrete. The next element are the inner passageways. You will see we did find them with the geo-radar technology. The next element, the water, the rivers, two rivers here plus a lot of underground water streams. The next element, underground tunnels and chambers. The next element, the sacred geometry. All seven elements are found in the case of Bosnian pyramids. Now, let's see how it looks like from the air. The town of Risoko, the river's eastern triangular face, and north. Now, so far we thought that the best orientation to the north is the northern side of the Great Pyramid of Egypt. The error from the true north is uh, 0 degrees and 2 minutes. The State Institute for, for Geodesy from Bosnia measured using their scientific instruments the orientation of this northern side and they concluded that the error from the true north is 0 degrees, zero minutes, and only 12 seconds. This is the most precise orientation to the north of all pyramids on the planet. In the last six years, there is a completely new phenomenon in archaeological and the scientific world. For the first time, it was not the museums, Departments of Archaeology, Universities, Ministry of Culture, who's been running a project on such a huge scale. Completely covers the Moon Pyramid. And the top of the Sun touches the top of the Moon Pyramid. In a symbolical way, they are telling us that the rule of the day and the sun is over. And the rule of the night and the moon starts. And that was the reason why we named them the Pyramids of the Sun and the Moon. Now, we do have hundreds of pyramids by that name in Central and South America, but this is the first case where such obvious astronomical relationship is present. Now, 
the position, the latitude of Great Pyramid of Egypt, 29 degrees, and look at those five decimals, 97948. Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, 43 degrees, 0.97948. Identical five decimals. We have opened this project from day one for everyone. We said there would be no elite science here. There will be no selected information. And we said we are open for the mainstream scientists, for the conservative scientists, for the alternative scientists, as long as they respect two terms. First, non-destructional investigations. We don't want people to come to break, to damage something, or to take and steal artifacts. And second, we said, whatever you come up with, share with us so we can share with the world. The leading European geophysicist from Germany, from the company called LGA Biotechnic, the leader of the team was Dr. Andreas Hassenstab. They brought their georadar equipment that can penetrate the surface for about 55 feet. And we've checked several locations the northern side of the Sun Pyramid. And they concluded, after they checked 10,000 square meters or 100,000 square feet, they discovered what they called 44 anomalies. In their terminology, anomaly means it's something that cannot be made by the natural forces. So they did discover the pyramid walls, the blocks one on top of each other, the inner passageways. This is an example of one of inner tunnels marked with those wooden sticks about 18 feet below the surface there is a passageway. Now this particular passageway is on the land that belongs to the private landlord. Seven years ago, before we came there, he was trying to sell his property. Ten acres plus house for only $20,000. And nobody wanted to buy because his property is on the pyramid. It's at 45 degrees. <laughs> you can do nothing with that. You cannot plant anything. You cannot have your domestic animals. And then we came. And once he saw the German scientist discovering the underground tunnels that leads to the center of the biggest pyramid on the planet, he approached me and he said, listen, I'd like to sell you two acres, <laughs> not even ten, two acres, for $500,000. Well, I told him, First of all, we are not in the real estate business. <laughs> and secondly, we don't have money for that. And he was thinking, he said, well, I'll tell you what. Why don't you start digging? And when you discover something, then we will talk. In other words, we discover the entrance, then he will take over. <laughs> and then he will start charging the entrance, and he will be deciding who can get in and who cannot, he will be selling stuff. I said, no, no, it doesn't go that way in science. Unless we have 100% control, we won't be doing anything. And even if it takes five years or 25 years, we need to make sure that it is fully controlled. Now, then we asked the experts in satellite screening to check the same area. This is the northern side of the Sun Pyramid. And they did, and they discovered on the satellite photos that those black lines do represent the inner tunnels. As you can see, they are straight, 
They even intersect at 90 degrees and then they disappear. Why? Because they go deeper than what sunlight can see. And then we asked the third team from the Institute for Physics, University of Belgrade, to double check the same sections like Germans. We did not tell them about the results of German scientists. So they applied very sophisticated geophysical methods. And when we received the written report, it completely matched what their German colleagues did. For example, this is the view of the Sun Pyramid from a little bit different angle. Here is the western triangular face. Here is the corner between west and north. In shadow is the northern side. Here is the corner between north and east. Here is the corner between west and south, one third of the corner. And to the right is the causeway that leads to the top of the pyramid. According to the Serbian geophysicist, the first meter, about three and a half feet, the green color, is a grass and a soil. And then, at depth of the one meter, the blue represents the continuous pavement. So they claim that this represents a terrace which is completely paved, 800 feet in length and 250 feet in width. At the place where the terrace meets the pyramid, the material changes. Thanks to the one of the landlord, which was away from the pyramid, when he was cleaning part of his land with a bulldozer to build a garage, he removed part of the terrace. And then we realized that the material for the pavement was a sandstone plates, about seven inches thick, with a smooth surface. And then, in order to double check, we hired a company from Sarajevo that uh, did a core drilling for us. They were drilling every 60 feet, and every time we hit three and a half foot in depth, we would hit this pavement. This is a real nice uh, three-dimensional topographic map of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. As we can see, the slope is the same from bottom to the top, from bottom to the top. This is the causeway, and this is the plateau on the top. It's flat, but its top is missing. Every original pyramid in China, Egypt, Mexico, Bosnia, would have the pyramidion, which is the shape of the pyramid on the top, but it was built from better material, either granite, gold-plated granite, or gold. And today, all those pyramidions are missing. They were intentionally removed from the original pyramids. When you remove one important part, then the rest of it cannot work properly. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> and then we apply satellite thermal analysis. What we did, we screened the valley during the daytime and during the nighttime. We compared the temperatures. So we wanted to see the speed of a heat loss. If it is a natural hill, they are very compact, and the heat loss is very slow. If it is artificial structure, due to existence of passageways and chambers, the heat loss is much quicker. This analysis has shown that the biggest heat loss is in the case of the pyramids of the sun, and the moon, and the dragon, and love. 
And then we asked our good friend, Dr. Harry Oldfield, from UK, to bring his so-called PIP camera that can film what he called bioenergy fields. So he came to Bosnia, and first he filmed one of the natural hills. It's a pointy hill. Those bioenergy fields that are, un that, that are not visible to the naked human eye are horizontal. Horizontal, all of them. And then one Bosnian village, again, those fields are horizontal. The green, the red, brown, green, the blue, the red, green. And then we filmed the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. Perfect geometry. And those fields are vertical. Why is that? Well, for the first time, you will be able to see this technology in use in a case of the pyramids. This technology can be used also in Egypt or Mexico or China, but those scientists do not let them to use the technology because they are saying, they are archaeologists, well, we know these are tombs, we don't need you know, your sophisticated technology. The sun pyramid, bioenergy fields. Look at inside the pyramid, the red color. There's the energy that's accumulating. Look, we have more and more energy. Look, it's all red. And this energy is getting released through the top of the pyramid and pushing those horizontal fields, and they are becoming vertical. Now, this circle might be interesting for your uh, uh, type of work that you're doing, but this time just disregard it. It's not part of today's lecture. <laughs> it seems like it's coming to the top of the pyramid, to the gas station. The money is filled, it's going back. Now, a lot of geologists are saying from day one, oh, there are no pyramids in Bosnia, it's all naturally made. Uh, you know, they were a result of the tectonic movements. So we took a geological map uh, that shows the tectonic movement. There's the blue arrow, tectonic movement, and the yellow is the orientation of the sides of the pyramids. Obviously, the direction of the blue and yellow is different. Dr. Shimatovic from Croatia did research on geometry of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun and he concluded that the angles to the base are rounded numbers, 35 degrees and 45 degrees. And not only that, in order to calculate the length of the sides at the base, we need to apply the square root of number 2. As you know, the result is irrational number, 1.41421. In order to determine the diagonal length, we need to apply square root of number 3. Again, 1.71 irrational number does not end. As we could see in the case of Great Pyramid of Egypt, we had number pi, 3.14159265358989. There are billions of digits. It never ends. In the case of Mexican pyramids, square root of number pi, irrational number. By applying the irrational numbers to the pyramids, the message was very obvious. For the ancients, irrational numbers were alive and the pyramids were alive as well. We asked the University of Sarajevo 
to come and check if there are any radioactivity in the valley of the pyramids. They did some checking, concluded that the values are 10 times lower than the minimum allowed values. And then we asked the leading uh, Russian geophysicist, Dr. Kavroshkin and Dr. Tsiplakov, to come and check for the artificiality. I met them five years ago in Cairo. At that time, they were investigating Egyptian pyramids with their seismic equipment. A small piece, small instruments. And uh, since Egyptian government, Egyptian archaeologists did not want to work with them, they were doing the work illegally. So what they would do, of course, they would play the guards at the pyramids, so they would place their instruments, the, you know, the guards were not looking. So what they concluded was that the, when they hit the pyramids, they are getting certain vibrations. When you compare those values with the values in the case of natural hills, they were different because the natural hills are very compact. So armed with those results, they came to Bosnia, spent two seasons with us. And they were checking Bosnian pyramids. After they processed the information, they concluded that the, the values in the case of Bosnian pyramids completely match, uh, completely match Egyptian pyramids. In other words, they are artificial structures, obviously in the shape of the pyramid. Not only that, they concluded that the the Pyramid of the Sun is completely made of non-compact material. So it's not the product of the natural sedimentation. And number three, from the very top, 280 meters deep or 900 feet below, they discovered the network of tunnels. Now the Russians, they have very advanced theoretical science. So, they submitted their report to the Russian Academy of Natural Sciences and concluded that the discovery of Bosnian pyramids is one of the biggest, not only in archaeology, but in science in general. A few words about the archaeological digging. This is the Sun Pyramid. The lines, they show the places where we removed soil. This is the corner between north and east. Other places are showing construction material below layers of soil. Northeast corner, we removed about three foot of soil and we are finding a beautiful 45 degree corner. Northwest corner is shown with this green line. And red is just perfectly straight line. The length about 200 meters or 660 feet, as we can see, green matches the red almost most of the way, meaning this corner is very well preserved. This is our archaeological trench number 4C. We removed about three foot of soil and we are finding rectangular blocks. 13 feet, 5 feet, 1.5 foot, 7 tons or 16,000 pounds. Flat top, break at 90 degrees, flat side, break at 90, flat bottom, it has 6 flat sides, 6 breaks at 90 degrees. Obviously, the product of the intelligent hand not natural cracking like some geologists suggest from their cozy offices in UK or US. Next to this one is the second one. As you can see, they form the same slope. And the third one and the fourth one. And uh, not only that, this is just the first row of blocks. Below is the second row. Below, a little bit move, the third row, and the fourth row. One, two, three, four. It's typical construction, not work of nature. And then we took samples from those blocks and sent them 
to six different institutes for materials, Bosnia, France, and Italy. The first conclusions came from the Institute for Construction, the city of Tuzla, Bosnia. They concluded the blocks were artificial construction material, which obviously was fresh at one point. From the University of Sarajevo, when they analyzed the sample from the Sun Pyramid, they concluded that this was a man-made concrete. Now, there are two properties of concrete that affect the quality. The first one is hardness. The harder the concrete, the better the quality. Our concrete in the 21st century are in the range from 10 to 60 megapascals. The sample they analyzed was 73.6 megapascals. Better quality than what we make in the US or Germany. The second property is water absorption. If during the winter water can get into the concrete blocks, the water freezes and then concrete breaks. So the idea is to keep the absorption as low as possible. Our standard is up to 3%. The one they measured, 1%. And it explains the durability of those concrete blocks. The third analysis from the University of Zenica, Professor Pašić, he analyzed 50 samples. And some of them were reaching unbelievable level of 133 megapascals. Never in human history such a good quality concrete was made like the one that covers the biggest pyramid on the planet. Probably that explains the fact why the Bosnians are excellent construction workers even today. <laughs> Professor Pašić concludes in his written report, the builders of the Bosnian pyramids used readily available materials. We can see the rocks, the pebbles, the sand, and for the binding material, they used clay, this brownish material in between rocks and pebbles. A lot of clay around. 2,000 years ago, ancient Romans used clay as the binder. But thousands of years before them, Clay was used as a binder in the case of Bosnian pyramids. They would ground clay, mix with the water, heat up to 400 degrees, and then clay is getting binding properties. Well, every history book, every book in the constructions is saying that the ancient Romans invented concrete 2,000 years ago. Well, when I met the president of Bosnian Academy of Sciences five years ago, I asked him, Professor Matic, when are you going to come and visit the pyramids? They are just 20 miles from the capital city of Sarajevo. He said, you claim that what you have over there is concrete. And you claim that it is much older than ancient Romans. He said, everybody knows that ancient Romans invented the concrete. Therefore, what you have there is not concrete, and there are not pyramids, and he turned his back and left. <laughs> and after that, not a single member of Bosnian Academy of Sciences came to the site. And those who pretended to become a members, and they were working with us, they had to disassociate themselves from our project. That's why it was very important to see what the descendants of those ancient Romans will have to say. We sent <laughs> samples to Politecnico di Torino, in Turin, Italy. And this is what they concluded, but we already knew that. That the binding material for the concrete was produced by clay heating process at high temperatures. And then we took samples of the leading expert in ancient concrete, 
Dr. Joseph Davidovitz of France, the guy who established the Institute for Geopolymers. The moment he saw that, he said, this is a concrete. Once he put it under his electronic microscope, he discovered what he called geopolymer cement, an artificial binder. The biologist, uh, Professor Regic, from Faculty of Natural Sciences, University of Sarajevo, analyzed the plants, the cultures, on the southern side of the Sun Pyramid. And he concluded that they belong to the much warmer climate, to the Mediterranean climate. Well, Bosnia is in continental, much colder. So how come? Well, the temperature on the surface of the Sun Pyramid is 10 degrees higher than on natural surrounding hills. The reason why? Due to existence of chambers and passageways. So, 2006, we started the excavation. We were removing layers of soil. We were exposing a huge concrete block to the public. And of course, we were showing our typical productivity. One is working, hundreds are watching. <laughs> <laughs> and on top of that, one is holding a speech. <laughs> so, 2006, 10 years after the war in Bosnia. The war was devastating, the economy was ruined. So, there was no hope. And then all of a sudden, you have such a huge discovery or the biggest pyramids in such a small country. For most of the people who are good intentional, this was a chance, this was a hope, because the tourism can start moving the economy. Well, you would expect that everybody line up behind you. That was not the case. <laughs> the cultural establishment attacked us fiercely. Professors of archaeology, history, anthropology, like this one from the University of Sarajevo, were saying there are no pyramids there. It was impossible. People from natural, from the museum in Sarajevo were saying, well, we didn't have advanced civilizations. Thousands of years back, they were just primitive cave people. So what they did, before we started digging, they wrote a petition to the Bosnian government asking them to stop the project. Well, we started digging in April of 2006, and one week later, the Bosnian Prime Minister, Dr. Haji Pasic, came to the site. He saw those rectangular blocks. He said, this is a man-made concrete. <laughs> <laughs> he saw thousands of tourists. He said, well, this is a good for tourism and the Bosnian economy. <laughs> Mr. Osmanagi, just keep working and don't worry about those jealous scientists. <laughs> <laughs> so he kept working, but they got very upset. For the, for the first time, that the government favored non-profit foundation instead of them, established scientists. So they wrote a letter to the head of the European Archaeological Association, Dr. Anthony Harding in London, United Kingdom. And then Dr. Harding started writing against us, calling this the biggest hoax saying these little foundations wants to get money from the poor Bosnian people. We didn't stop either. And then he organized a petition with 85 of leading American, British, German, French archaeologists, historians, anthropologists, and geologists. They were saying to Bosnian government, you should stop this hoax. These people don't know what they are doing. You should put end to it. But their petition was rejected as well. 
So now they got upset. <laughs> At their conferences, every year, they were threatening archaeologists from Europe not to go to Bosnia. And if they do, once they go back to their countries, they won't be able to find a job as the archaeologist. So the year 2006, we did not have archaeologists from Europe or 2007 or 2008. Now, according to the law, if you want to do archaeological project, you need to have project documentation, archaeologists, tools, equipment. So what did we do? We asked the government of Egypt to help us and send three experts in archaeology and geology. So they did. First, they sent Dr. Ali Barakat, the guy with four decades of experience in geology and archaeology. He wrote the book how the Egyptian pyramids were built. He was on National Geographic. He was a very well-known figure. He came to Bosnia, spent 42 days, and on June 23rd, he had a press conference, press conference in Sarajevo, which he ended with the words, Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is a man-made pyramid. A big boost for us, but big slab for them. So, what they did from National Museum, they wrote a letter the same day to his boss, Pharaoh Dr. Zahi Havas, in Cairo. And they said in the letter, your man confirmed that the pyramids were built in Bosnia. That's outrageous. You need to stop him. You need to do whatever it takes to stop this hoax. Two days later, June 25th, Dr. Havas is organizing a meeting in Cairo between the Ministry of Culture of Egypt, the Ministry of Tourism of the Egyptian government, and his uh, Department for Antiquities, with one topic on agenda. The effects of discovery of Bosnian pyramids to the tourism in Egypt. <laughs> now imagine 20% of tourists from Europe instead to Africa, Egypt, coming to Bosnia, which happened to be in Europe. 20% of 15 and a half billion dollars are over 3 billion dollars. Now, discovery of Bosnian pyramids is not a local issue. It's a global, scientific, economical, political issue. So after the meeting, Dr. Havas is coming in front of hundreds of journalists and TV crews with the words, there are no pyramids in Bosnia. Those concrete blocks are not concrete. They are naturally made blocks. Dr. Barakat is no expert in pyramids. And Osman Agic is hallucinating. <laughs> well, Dr. Barakat went back to Cairo. He was working for the Ministry of Geology. And they fired him. Because he dared to speak his own scientific mind. He did not ask for permission. And us, what did we do? Well, we kept hallucinating. <laughs> <laughs> and opened the project for the whole world. We invited volunteers to come to Bosnia, and they did at their own expense. And they were helping us removing tons and tons of materials from the biggest blocks and the biggest pyramid on the planet. Such enthusiasm has never been present in any archaeological project on the planet. And it lasted for three weeks. The president of the Bosnian Commission for the State Monument Preservation, with the members of the commission, 
changed the law. And from one very small area on the top of the Sun Pyramid, which was called protected area, because of the small medieval fortress, he enlarged protected area for 97 times. And all our archaeological trenches has become a part of protected area, meaning we cannot work there anymore. Now, there is a possibility in the law that you submit your project documentation and you get a permit to still work there, which we did, together with the Cairo University, the biggest archaeological faculty on the planet. We submitted the project documentation, 300 pages take, and in most countries, people would be proud to see leading world archaeologists working on your site. In most countries. <laughs> The Federal Commission for National Monument rejected our project documentation three times with no explanation. And her boss, the mini Minister for Culture, Mr. Grachowicz, who was minister in two terms, he was saying publicly, while I minister, they will never get the permit or the funds. And until then, our project was very popular, even among politicians that are coming, that are on TVs. But from that day on, whoever came there, the local magazines and the newspapers, the journalists, they were writing against them. So in a few months, we had no politicians anymore. In order to stop the projects, what you do? You stop the guy who is in charge. So, what they were trying to do was to discredit me by ordering articles against me. For example, this guy, very popular writer in that area, was saying, oh, this guy Osmanagic, he made his fortune during 1990s in Russia, during Yeltsin's era. He was linked to the mafia over there. That's how he made his money. Interestingly enough, of all the countries I've been I've never been to Russia. <laughs> <laughs> the geologists from Bosnia, they were saying, no pyramids there. But they wouldn't, but they wouldn't bother to come and check for themselves. <clears throat> Archaeologists in Germany and other countries, from their office, they were saying, it's impossible, no pyramids. Mm -hmm. So what do you do when, for example, the Minister for Culture does not give you support and publicly saying you should stop the project? What do you do when all the archaeological associations, geological associations, universities from your country, they want you to stop? They write petitions against you. What do you do when European archaeologists are against you? What do you do when all other archaeologists and experts from US and UK and France and Egypt are against you? You give up, at least in 99% of cases. <laughs> But we haven't given up, because we said this project is so important globally, and we know that we have truth on our end, and we're going to prevail. What we did was we saw that federal ministry who rejected our project application. They kept our case in the drawers at the court for four years. So finally, when the government changes, three months back, they got the judgment saying that we were right. For the first time, one little non-profit foundation won against the government entity. So we are going back to the Sun Pyramid this year. One little pyramid in El Salvador. Look at the shape and geometry. The same shape and geometry, this time we are back to Bosnia. Bosnian pyramid of the moon, completely covered by solid vegetation. The western triangular face. We've opened 46 archaeological trenches. Everywhere we were digging, we were finding the paved terraces, rectangular structures, vertical walls, more terraces, steps, 
shaped blocks and plates, more walls, in other words, under the layers of soil, a huge stone structure in the shape of the pyramid. Our archaeological trench number 20, layers of soil, when we remove them, about three and a half feet, you are finding a beautiful terrace, shaped sandstone blocks. Sandstone is a very common natural construction material in this area for thousands of years. We can see the binding material between those blocks. And again, typical Bosnian productivity. <laughs> <laughs> I don't... Now, from day one, when we started cleaning the moon pyramid, again, we got voices against the project. They were saying, oh, there are no pyramids there. All that is natural. Among them, even the alternative scientists like Dr. Robert Schock. He was saying it was all natural. Really, is Mother Nature capable of shaping the blocks on all six sides, completely flat sides, 90 degrees, and then transporting them from the quarry a couple of miles away, and then laying them out so perfectly, they're perfectly in line, connecting them with the artificial binding material and even building the steps? <laughs> or is it the work of intelligent hands? You make your own conclusions. 2010-2011 we opened the project for volunteers again and we had hundreds of them. And for the first time, archaeologists from Europe, from six European countries, Italy, France, Spain, UK, Hungary, and Croatia. They were showing me the emails from their university professors, threatening them not to go to Bosnia. But once they did, they would get emails again saying, and now you won't be able to find the work in this country anymore. But they said, this project is much more important than our individual destinies. Now, we have pyramids in Bosnia. How old are they? Now, we can see that they are covered by layers of soil. If we can figure out the age of the soil, then we will get the minimum age of the structure. The scientific disciplines that investigate the origin and the age of soil is called pedology. The guy who established the Institute for Agropedology in Bosnia, Professor Resolovic, came with his team, took samples, and concluded that age of this soil is between 12 and 15,000 years. Meaning, the pyramids are even older than 12,000 years. We've noticed that on some of the terraces, there are two layer blocks, top layer and the base. The top and the base. So, if we have two layer blocks, it means that somebody glued the top layer to the base. So, there is a possibility that there is an organic material in the binder. A leaf, piece of wood. So, what we did from this terrace, we were removing on several places the top layer. And then we would found in the binding material the brownish material, which looked like an organic material. So there was a possi possibility to date this organic material, to date the binder. So we sent samples to the Polish lab in Gliwice, Silesian University of Technology the radiocarbon lab. And they said that piece of organic material was indeed organic material and the age is BC 10,350 years plus minus 50 or 12,350 years before present. So now we got the hard scientific data telling us that that particular terrace on the moon pyramid was built over 12,000 
years ago. How is it possible that Bosnian pyramids are older than Egyptian pyramids? <laughs> You know, in Bosnia, we tend to construct without construction permits. <laughs> so while we are building our pyramids, Egyptians were in line waiting for the construction permits. <laughs> now, 12,350 years, what was happening then? According to the mainstream scientists, nothing. Yeah. It was the age of the primitive caveman who was not capable of pretty much anything. Mm -hmm. It seems that they don't read about the sensational discoveries in the last 15 years all over the planet. On the bottom of the Pacific floor, between the Japanese islands of Yonaguni, the Thailand, and the Chinese mainland, 13 underwater cities were discovered at the depth of 100 feet to 250 feet. Now, we can see that those cities have structures, stepped in design, megalithic in nature, with temples on the top. More steps and half radius terraces. The moment those photos came to the Japanese newspapers. The Japanese scientists jumped, claiming, this is all natural. <laughs> it was made by water streams. <laughs> and then they were backed by German and American scientists, historians, anthropologists. Why? Because people would start asking questions. Who built it? When? Well, we know when. This is on the bottom of the Pacific floor, 300 feet below the surface. When was the last time when the water level rose for 300 feet? 12,500 years ago. The end of the last ice age. So, who was capable of building these megalithic structures then. When they preach us, it was just the age of primitive cavemen. Well, at the time, most of the areas in Asia were covered in ice, up to two miles in height. Most of the Europe, from Austria to the north, were covered by ice. There were no France, no Germany, no Scandinavian countries, no UK, just the ice. Only the southern Europe, Croatia, Bosnia, Greece, southern parts of Italy, Spain, there were no ice. Here in the States, from the middle of the US states, up ice. So, a global catastrophe happened and those huge quantities of ice melted. And that water went to the world seas and oceans. Pacific went up for 300 feet. Atlantic, 400 feet. 99% of humanity was wiped off. Those who survived, who were hidden in the caves, underground tunnels, when they came back to the surface, they could witness that the civilizations was gone. And they had to start from the beginning. And that's how the Neolithic era started. In eastern Turkey, Gobekli Tepe, archaeological site, we can see 45 megaliths in the shape of letter T. Some of them are reaching 75 tons, or 170,000 pounds. Obviously, the caveman could not shape lift, erect this. It was advanced civilization. Now, the human bones were discovered and they are taking us back all the way to 13,000 years before present. 
American anthropologists are saying it simply should not be there. <laughs> but it's there. And we need to deal with this. Can one stone block change the way we view human history? Yes. This is the biggest shaped stone block on the planet. It's located in eastern Lebanon, in Baalbek. Tens of them like this. This particular one is 1,250 tons in weight. The American corporation Bechtel, American Corps of Engineers, have equipment to move 350 tons at one time. 350, 1,200 tons, four times heavier. If you want to find the proof about the more advanced ancient civilizations, we don't need to go metaphysical. This is a physical proof of such more advanced civilization. Machu Picchu. Eastern Peru, the place where Andes and Amazon meets. We think that we know everything about this location. You take any book, history, textbook, encyclopedia, go to internet, everyone claims the same thing. It was a royal retreat for Incas. Every book said that, except for one, mine. <laughs> 1536, the Spanish conquerors conquered the Inca civilization. Besides all the bad stuff they did, genocide, cultural side, they did one good thing. They were writing everything in their chronicles. And they are saying Incas were primitive. They did not have tools to shape megalithic blocks. They did not have transportation to move those megalithic blocks. Well, when you look at the site, you can see four distinctive civilizations. The first one with the blocks that would reach 250 tons. The mass is not the only problem. The second problem is that the chemical analysis has shown that this material is nowhere to find in 120 miles radius. The closest quarry is in Bolivia. For those of you who went there, you know that the Machu Picchu is 12,000 feet above the sea level, very remote area. No roads, even today. They got the train from 1960 for tourists. So who was moving 250 tons from Bolivia to the top of the mountains? The second civilization, blocks are a little bit smaller, tens of tons, but as you can see, they perfectly fit each other. No binding material. But after thousands of years and so many earthquakes, they fit each other so well that you cannot swipe your credit card between them. The third civilization, we can see the blocks almost the same in size and dimensions. Now that's our logic. We build a factory, we produce millions of blocks, we buy them and then we build our palaces and homes. Thousands of years passed by, and then Incas in 12th century rediscovered the lost city in Andes. And they took those small stones, they made separations between those huge walls, they made little rooms, primitive roofs, and that's where they were bringing their royals. Now, who were the original builders? Let's rotate the photo of the city. 
here's a city, then we rotate for nine degrees, and when we look the landscape, and three mountains, we will see the face, the nose, the lips, the cheek, the eyes. A most beautiful and calm face ever. Somebody was able to terraform the mountains and leave the message how they looked like and that they were facing the universe. <laughs> Eastern Peru, Olante Tambo, six blocks made from material called rhyolite. Rhyolite is reddish volcanic stone. Six blocks, 600 tons, the closest quarry, again, Bolivia, 100 miles away, 600 tons. Back to the bars and pyramids, the terrace on the moon pyramid. Beautiful tiles, like those Italian tiles in our bathrooms. <laughs> step, 21 feet away, another step. 21 feet away, another step. When you have the same distances, you got the plan. <laughs> In other terrace, tile, six shaped sides, another one, another one, another one, binding material between them. Top of the moon pyramid, we remove three foot of soil and they expose the terraces, the first one, the second one, the third one. Then they cut the hole and let's see who did we find in the hole. <laughs> the first row of blocks, layer of clay, four inches of clay, clay was used as a binder. The second row, layer of clay, four inches. The third row, layer of clay. The ancients were wise. They knew properties of natural construction materials. They knew for the clay that it was excellent, not only as a binder, but it was waterproof, it was good thermal insulation, and then it would give flexibility to the construction. The construction does not collapse. In the case of earthquakes, it moves, it breathes, and then it goes back. The test is on the moon pyramid. The large size, the medium size, the small size. Large, medium, small. Large, medium, small. In between, clay. Clay was used in huge quantities as a construction material in this case. So what we have here is a golden ratio. The geologists are attacking us saying, oh, it's all natural, it's natural sedimentation. They don't realize that the clay was used as a construction material in the case of all Chinese pyramids. When they stripped one of them of soil and wood, they realized that 90% is a clay. And even in underground tunnels, 80% is a clay and the rest bricks and sandstone. The German archaeologists from Kiel were investigating close by the site, and they discovered in the cultural layer 6,000 to 7,000 years before present, a nice ceramic pyramid, four-sided pyramid, plateau on the top, even the ornaments, they're pyramids. Now, this is an artistic product. We know that because they are very fine ceramic walls. So, Six, according to them, 6,500 years old. Well, that can be artistic product. That's the first option. The second one, that even during those times, thousands of tourists were coming to Bosnia, so this was the first Bosnian souvenir. One of the sites, three and a half feet below the layers of soil on the pavement, we found this beautiful 
sandstone foot with the five toes. Now, it matches the shoe size of number eight. And number eight is a women's size, it's not a man's size. But for some, it is a proof that Barzian pyramids were built by the women. <laughs> A lot, <laughs> a lot more pieces like this one that uh, perfectly fits in the hand. Maybe this was the first uh, Bosnian boomerang. <laughs> Interesting sandstone pieces with the ridges in the, probably part of the bigger, larger object. Looks like a knife. Ceramics. We can see several cultural layers on our sides. Beautiful piece with the two different types of stones, maybe amulet found on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Dragon. 2008, we organized the first international scientific conference on Bosnian pyramids. 55 scientists from 15 countries, from Egypt, China, Saudi, from Poland, Russia, UK, Austria, Croatia, Bosnia. Those scientists concluded that the Bosnian pyramids were archaeological site, not geological, not natural. Unfortunately, it's 2008. The boycott of the project in the media already started. In 2006, when we discovered those first concrete blocks, Associated Press sent their journalists in Sarajevo. They took the photos, they sent the word to the, to the world saying, that the first proofs of Bosnian pyramids were unearthed. Of course, it was Associated Press. Everybody took the news from CNN, ABC, all the magazines and newspapers. The very next day, American Archaeological Society wrote a letter to Associated Press headquarters in New York asking them not to write about the Bosnian pyramids because they are fake, they are all natural. From their headquarters, they are sending email to their journalists in Sarajevo, threatening that lady not to write about the pyramids anymore. The same things happened to France Press and Reuters. And from that day on, we were not in the mainstream media anymore. So this gathering, which would otherwise be all over the planet, nobody mentioned a word about them. But independent scholars, like triple PhD from Egypt, <coughs> Dr. Nadel Selam, the guy who discovered four pyramids in Egypt, they were coming two seasons, and they were saying that the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is the biggest in the world. Until he was threatened that he is going to lose his retirement. <laughs> Dr. Ezra Zubrov of Buffalo State University, archaeologist, he visited the site. He gave an interview for TVs, magazines, saying that you need to find out who built the Bosnian pyramids, when they were built. He was very impressed. We put his statement on YouTube, came back to States his colleagues attacked him. And then he disassociated himself from the project saying, I didn't say that, I didn't really mean that. 2011, September, 27 scientists, the second international scientific conference, independent scholars from several scientific disciplines concluded this is a globally important project. Those pyramids will change our human history because of the age and its existence. So, after five years of investigation, we got proof that this is indeed construction complex. Now, we don't intend to spend another hundred years trying to convince everyone that we have pyramids in Bosnia. We need to move on, we need to find out what was the purpose of those pyramids. <coughs> Archaeologists cannot help us anymore. Geologists also. Construction engineers are architects, not anymore. We need the help from experts 
on energy phenomena, physicist, electrical engineer. Dr. Mizrak from Zagreb, Croatia, PhD in physics, came with his team and the instruments, and he was measuring the frequencies, electromagnetic fields, in the range of hertz, kilohertz, megahertz, gigahertz. He was checking the valley first, the natural hills, and then the pyramids. He was going around the pyramid of the sun, he could not find any anomaly, until he got on the very top of the pyramid. At the center of the plateau, the radius of 13 feet, when he get in there, he was able to detect electromagnetic field. He get out of the circle, no detection. He goes back, he detects this energy phenomena. What does it mean? It means that electromagnetic field does not go left and right, but it goes up. He measured the strength of 28 kilohertz. That's something that Mother Nature does not make. It's produced by machine. These results were independently confirmed by the Serbian engineer Goran Marjanovic, who did confirm this frequency of 28 kilohertz on the top of the Sun Pyramid. So, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun is not just a construction but it also generates this focused energy beam going through the very top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Not to the left, not to the right, just through the very top. Now, we wanted to see the strength of the signal. So we placed our instruments on the top, on the surface. And then we lift it up for 10 feet and then we lift it for another 10 feet. Every time we went up, the strength of the signal was getting stronger and stronger. So now, physicists could not believe their eyes. They said, well, in physics, natural laws and our technology, which we called Hertzian technology, we learned about the phenomena when you are closer to the source, the signal is stronger. You move away, the signal is weaker. But here in Bosnia, everything is different. <laughs> <laughs> so we have something that we can call non Hertzian phenomena or non Hertzian technology. We don't have that technology in the 21st century. However, the guy who was born 150 miles from here to the west was experimenting with that type of technology, 1899 and 1900. And his name was Nikola Tesla. In his lab in Colorado Springs, he constructed what is today known as Tesla's coil. He was producing the energy beam and he was able to send it wirelessly from one end of his lab to another one, 55 feet away. And he was able to lit up the light bulbs, even if they were burned with this type of energy. And just before they are going to burn down his lab, he did the last experiment. He sent the energy beam to the ionosphere around our planet, the energy shield, it got reflected it was coming back much stronger non-Hertzian phenomena. And then he was able to lit up all 20,000 homes in Colorado Springs, proving that the free energy was possible. Unlimited quantities of energy, wireless transportation, and you were not losing the energy during the way, but you are getting more energy. Now, 110 years ago, was the corporation accepted that invention? Of course not. What they were going to do with the free energy? Who are they going to sell the free energy? <laughs> 
what is our society based on? Profit. How are you going to make profit with free energy? So for them, it was much more profitable to build very expensive hydro power plant, thermal power plants. Nowadays, nuclear power plants. But with the free energy, you would get the first pillar of the free society. Mm -hmm. And the second pillar is the free flow of knowledge, of information. Mm -hmm. In those two pillars, you have a base mm -hmm. for free women and free men. Professor Paolo de Bertolus, University of Trieste, Italy. He was detecting and measuring other energy phenomena on the top of the Bosnian pyramid of the sun. This time it was ultrasound. Ultrasound is the vibrational phenomenon. We can hear in the range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Everything above 20 kilohertz is called ultrasound. We cannot hear, but it does exist. Everything below 20 hertz is called infrasound. We cannot hear. It does exist. Our planet vibrates at 6 hertz. The pyramid vibrates at 7 hertz. And the ultrasound, we were able to detect and measure the ultrasound in a range from 28 to 32 kilohertz. So, he did detect it with what he called compounder. And then he converted it to something that we can hear. 8 kilohertz. So, for the first time, we will be able to hear how one pyramid speaks. like somebody was trying to send a fax. <laughs> <laughs> or they were sending us some other messages. Now, we converted this signal to the piano tune. So let's see how it will look like on piano. That was, that was 2011, and then we are doing more recording, 2012, March and April, and this will be the new recording. Some of you who were at my previous presentation in Dallas did not hear this, so 
Again, we recorded what we now called the ultrasound beam. We also noticed that with the weather, this ultrasound beam gets a little bit different during the winter and during the summer. As you can see, in Bosnia, it's so different that our pyramids speak, play piano, send faxes, send messages. These are the instruments that we used. Well, it says that we just changed the instrumentation from 2011 to 2012. What we did, we used the mics directly. We just cleaned from the other sounds. Okay, I'm on. Now, what we notice on, on this illustration, we can see the graphically how the ultrasound is produced and we can see five blocks, and they are very regular. So it seems that it is continuous and regular. When you have something that, like that, it has to be produced by the machine. So this is the regularity of those blocks. Now, we have checked the hills in the area of Visoko, and that regularity we could not find anywhere. And then what we did, we compared it with the hills or mountains that they are pyramidal in shape, like the one over here. It's called Monte Pavione in Italy. It has clear pyramidal shape. So we did record the sound, and again, no regularity. So this is another very strong proof that we have something artificial in origin, but not only that, it produces certain energy phenomena very regularly. So, the teams of independent scholars from Finland, from Italy, from Croatia, from Greece, and other countries keep coming to Bosnia investigating those phenomena. Because the ultrasound is extremely important. One of the people who realized that was Dr. Royal Reif. In 1931, he invented the microscope. And for the first time, someone was able to see live viruses. This is the structure of the viruses. Incidentally, they have a shape of pyramid. Now, of course, the microbes, that includes viruses and bacteria and some bad cells, organisms, they are the base of all our diseases, including cancer. Now, Dr. Reif not only invented the microscope, but also he invented the machine to produce the ultrasound. And then he was checking the effects of different frequencies on viruses. And then he was able to find the frequency that kills viruses and do no harm on our body. In 1934, he challenged the leading medical authorities in the US. 
And they sent him, 25 of them, doctors, PhDs from different cities in the US. They sent him 50 terminally ill patients from cancer. They came to his lab, he exposed them to his machine. In two weeks, 86% of them were cured. The remaining 40%, he was playing some more with different frequencies. And very soon, the success rate was 100%. Those doctors could not believe, but they were direct witness to the experiment. Soon after, American Medical Association is coming to Rife's lab. And he received an offer he could not refuse. But he did refuse it. Millions of dollars at that time for his machines. After his refusal, somehow his lab got burned down and his five machines were stolen. In a few years, by 1939, his work was banned. It was illegal. So he died very unhappy man. And even today, when you find the companies who start producing those instruments that produce ultrasound, and even when they figure out the exact frequencies that kill the fungus, that kill bacteria and viruses, that kill worms, that kill tits and parasites, they are banned and proclaimed illegal in Europe and the US. Now from the last time, from three weeks ago, I told you that we are going to do an experiment on the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Now, we have recorded that the pyramid produces electromagnetic fields and the ultrasound. So we wanted to see what's going to happen when we produce and emit those fields to the pyramid. And that's exactly what happened. We brought about 600 pounds of equipment, installed it on the top of the Sun Pyramid, emit to the pyramids electromagnetic fields of the same frequency that the pyramid was producing, and the ultrasound of the same frequency that the pyramid was producing. We wanted to see the reaction. Now, since we knew the strength of the signal that was coming from the pyramid, we were able to calculate the signal we're going to go get back from the pyramid. In the strength, it would be like 0.9 volts. For two days, or exactly 54 hours, we were emitting the signals, we were recording everything. And the first preliminary results are telling us that the pyramid talked back to us over three times stronger than what we expected. So the pyramid is not a natural formation, but it is not a machine either. Preliminary results are telling us that the pyramid talked back to us over three times stronger than what we expected. So the pyramid is not a natural formation, but it is not a machine either, because with machines, you know what you can get back. So what is a pyramid? Does it have its own conscience? The height of the pyramid, in meters, 767. However, when we draw the line, Following the slope on both sides, we are getting the virtual top of the pyramid, 782 meters, or about 2,400 feet, which is exactly the same length as the secondary wire in the case of Tesla's coil. The lengths are extremely important because they affect the frequency. So that particular frequency produced by the pyramid 
could be produced only with this height. We asked our friend Klaus Donner, the Austrian researcher, to help us figure out what we have inside the pyramid. A friend of his, the US physicist who developed this georadar system, and which at this moment is not commercially available. It is used only by US military. By the way, it was used when they were looking for Saddam Hussein in those underground bunkers. Well, he checked our Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. This is north and this is east. Those different colored lines are showing the tunnels on different levels. For example, the light blue at 5 meters or about 17 feet depth. This is light blue, so this is a tunnel. At the end, the circle is a chamber. White 10 meter depth or 33 feet, here's white, the tunnels, the tunnels, the tunnels, and look how many chambers. Blue, 40 meter depth, 135 feet, here's our blue. Brown, 230 feet, here's brown. Yellow, almost 500 feet below the top is yellow. Black, 600 feet. Red, 1,000 feet. So now we can see a huge network, different levels. But then also, look at here. We have black, then blue is moved a little bit, then white is moved a little bit, then red is moved a little bit. It's like a spiral. Now, spiral is very important because when you have a spiral, then you have a base for your non-Hertzian spiral waves. In other words, the pyramid is a huge machine and obviously more than that, capable of producing different energy phenomena. Now, it's not only Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun that is still active today. The Kukulkan Pyramid in Chichen Itza, three years ago, the tourist from El Salvador, while filming his kids on digital camera, he was able to make the photo of the energy beam coming to the center of the Kukulkan Pyramid. And Dr. DJ Nelson, 30 years ago, made a replica of Great Pyramid of Egypt and placed a Tesla's coil inside. And soon after, the spiral non-Hertzian energy beam was produced. So, what is the purpose of the pyramids? Pyramids have nothing to do with the pharaohs and tombs. They are the most complex machines that, in some cases, work independently, ever built on the face of the planet. And, you know, once you hear so many different things, pyramids are not pharaonic tombs, they're all over the planet, so many different things and data, you know, it's a whole mess in our heads. So how we can handle that? Well, there are three magic words that can help us. <laughs> Buy this book. <laughs> because by this book, you help to support the project. And I will finish with a complex below the ground, with the Bosnian underground. Not political, but archaeological. <laughs> One and a half mile from the pyramid, we discovered the entrance to the underground labyrinth. 700 yards have been cleaned. This is a map of what we cleaned and secured so far for the tourists. 
The balance are building material we call conglomerate. It's tens of miles in length. Okay. Under the conglomerate, we are finding a huge blocks. This is 2006. Okay. 2012, completely clean. It's 18,000 pounds in weight. It's sitting on those plates, on support. Those plates are very important. It means somebody plays those plates, they put a megalith on the top of it, and they even connect them with the binding material based on calcium carbonate. They do not want this block to move left or right. Why? You know why. 70 meters below is underground water stream. So this block is exactly above that underground river. Then, when you look at the surface, it looks like relief with the hills and the valleys and the rivers. We took samples from the top of it, sent to the Institute for Atomic Physics in Croatia. They applied very sophisticated analysis, random diffraction and phase analysis, concluding that this was an artificial ceramic material. Now, in archaeology, we got used to ceramic dishes, small ceramic vases. But here in Bosnia, everything is big and bigger. <laughs> the biggest pyramids. And now we have the biggest ceramic sculpture of 18,000 pounds. We have checked with the georadar instruments if there was anything inside this block or under. And we concluded that exactly in the middle there was an oval object. Somebody poured the base, placed the object, and sealed everything. We discover. So, what do we have? 70, 70 feet below underground water stream. Water generates the energy. The energy hits this oval object, it starts working, it is surrounded by ceramic, ceramic vibrates, and produces electromagnetic field. So what we are looking here is the ancient technology. And those fields we can measure using our scientific instruments. And again, the frequency 28 to 32 kilohertz, very important for the ancient builders. Is all this in your book? Yes. We are finding several of those megaliths, they are always above the underground water streams and they are always producing these electromagnetic fields filling the tunnel network. 2006, we discovered another megalith, we call it K1, covered by conglomerate, we remove the conglomerate. It is 9,000 pounds. On its surface, we are finding symbols carved, more symbols, and more symbols. Total of 25 symbols. I wouldn't say that this is alphabet, but some type of energy symbols. Oops, in mainstream archaeology, that term does not exist yet. More plates, more symbols. And on one of them, symbols are very similar to the runic writing. Runes, that's the oldest European writings. As a matter of fact, we located seven symbols that are exactly the same, like runes. So far, we have one try to decipher it. It is based on Ralph Blum's book, The Book of Runes, and deciphering saying, gate is closed. We are on standstill. We will have to fight to defense and conquer until we are able to go through the gate. Everything we do, we need a scientific 
confirmation from several independent sources. Right now, this is one. The tunnels are tens of miles in length. Somebody had to remove hundreds of thousands of tons of material. What material? Conglomerate, pebbles, rocks, sand. Pebbles, rocks, sand. What did they do with the hundreds of thousands of tons of materials? They built the concrete blocks to cover the largest pyramid on the planet. So they used every cubic feet of the material. All they needed was binding material, the clay. So by using all this material, they became the first eco-friendly civilization. <laughs> we have two mysteries in the tunnels. First, who built this network? Tens of miles in length, 70 feet below the surface. Obviously, somebody with very advanced engineering skills. But second, we can see that all those tunnels are closed. Somebody was bringing <coughs> hundreds of thousands of tons of material back, filling in those tunnels, and the millions of these rocks, probably from river beds, making those dry walls sealing everything off. <coughs> they wanted to hide something real big. Another example of side tunnel, filling material, drywall. Now, in that filling material, we can find organic material, which can tell us when did they close all these tunnels. We checked organic material in several labs in Sweden, in Poland, and we are getting 4,610 years. So, the tunnel network was built at the same time as the pyramids, over 12,000 years ago. But they were sealed almost 5,000 years ago. Two different civilizations. In those film material, we are finding a lot of artifacts, like this possible hammer. Concrete, man-made concrete. Ceramics, okay. open containers, okay. interesting piece with the hole here. Maybe they were sharpening the pencils. <laughs> One of the plates, we are finding a lot of carvings, with a lot of different symbols. Okay. This one is interesting, with the five individually shaped pieces glued together. More containers. And the molds to cast the metal. We analyzed this material, three different types of metals, and we never used this combination in the 21st century. The drywalls, very interesting. A lot of rocks around it, but exactly in the middle, vertically and horizontally, one rectangular plate. Okay. 2010, we discovered the first underground chamber full of the filling material. They removed everything. This chamber is 500 square feet, 13 feet in height, with eight side tunnels. We notice that the people, when they get inside, they feel good. This chamber is approximately 700 feet from the entrance. So you're going through tunnels, the air is perfect, air circulation excellent. You get there, if you had some small pain, headache for example, headache is gone. You had back pain, it's gone. We even heard for some, I would say, miracles, which we don't promote at this time. We want to do more medical studies. But we wanted to see why people feel good inside. So we measured the concentration of negative ions. As you know, negative ions kill bacteria and viruses. They clean our blood and our body. At the entrance of tunnels, the concentration of the tunnel of the negative ions, 1,000 kilo ions per cubic centimeter. In this room tonight, about 300 kilo ions. In that chamber, 43,000. 100 times higher than what we have here now. 100 times healthier than what we have here. 
Was somebody building an underground healing facility? Second chamber, 13 feet high. We measure the air circulation, humidity, temperature, no poisonous gases, perfect circulation. The first underground blue lake discovered two, two years ago. The third chamber, we were cleaning one of the tunnels and we saw the hole. For the first time in six years, there was no filling material behind, meaning there are open sections. So then one thing, what is the biggest reward for the researcher? It's not the money, it's not the title, it's not the position. It's the moment like this, when you got the opportunity to go somewhere where for thousands of years, human foot has not been. We discovered to the left about 250 feet of open tunnels and to the right about 700 feet. A lot of new walls. And usually, we have different beings that follow us, that uh, keep us a company. <coughs> like this orb, the light being is between the camera and the tool. It's about two foot radius. Perfectly rounded. Now, we're looking for another reason why it's so healthy environment underground. As you know, we are always exposed to the cosmic negative radiations. Right now, right here, some of those rays that are coming from the cosmos, they are very bad and very harmful. And our body cells are fighting those harmful radiations. There are Hartman grids, most of you know for them. They go east, west, north, south, the places where they intersect, very bad for us. That's the reason why when they were building temples in Sumer and, ba and Babylon, they would put those stone columns exactly at the intersection of Hartman grids. So people <coughs> don't get exposed to the negative radiations. Underground water always generates energy, but negative energy for our bodies. Then there is underground natural negative radioactivity. So our body cells are very busy fighting those enemies. Well, we measured with the instrument the presence of negative radiations in the tunnels, and we found none. So what does that mean? It means that our body cells can start doing their job. What is their job? We will see. The youngest volunteer last year, 73 years old engineer Janez Belko from Slovenia, came to the valley with his instruments to measure the aura, the bioenergy field around our body. This instrument is based on Professor Korotkovs from University of St. Petersburg in Russia. Place all your ten fingers, and they give you individual auras that gives you the aura around your body. These blue protective shields. Now, if it is continuous, it means you are healthy. If there is interruptions, like this is me before I enter the tunnel, you can see the left side is good, continuous. The right side good. Oops. By the knees, we can see that the piece is missing, the piece of protective shield, the piece of aura. It means there is a potential problem. Now, in this particular case, potential problem with the blood circulation. The rest of it, not bad, not bad here. The chest, also potential problem. The red means a lot of stress. Spent one and a half hours, came back and measured it again. Left side good, right side, oops, look at the knee. Completely healed. Even the chest, much better. The red is moved away. So it seems when you are inside a tunnel, when we don't have those enemies, the negative radiations, 
the cells start communicating among themselves and they start fixing the problems in the body. They start the self-regeneration process. Seven chakras, human body. Blue before, red after. It seems that even chakras after the visit to the tunnel works better. They get more energy. So the energy flows better through the chakras. What we did, we did a study of 79 people, male, female, old, young, volunteers, tourists. Brown is before, green is after they came back from the tunnel. Brown before, green is higher. Brown before, green is higher. Brown, green, brown, green. 85% of cases are showing us that the aura is improved. And the improvement is from 10 to 40%. The biggest improvement was in the case of one young man from Croatia. And we told him what we were doing. The rest of them, we never told, you know, what the experiment was about. So that young man went inside by that megalith K2. He went there, he relaxed, he was meditating for two hours, he came back, and his improvement was the best. Left before, right after. We can even see that uh, the aura is better distributed, more evenly distributed after you come back from the tunnel. The new sections, walls are 40, 50 feet in length. A lot of water. Now, this is still water. It's been there for a very long time. It's not from the surface. Now, you would imagine that if the water is there for a very long time, it would be filthy. So we took samples and sent them to the Institute for Public Health. Did chemical and microbiological analysis. The results, the water was perfectly clean, healthy, and drinkable. How is that possible? Because of high concentration of negative ions, they are like barriers for the viruses and bacteria. We can even see the channels that the builders made because the channels make the water move. When the water moves, it produces more negative ions. The water is reaching five and a half feet on some places, creating artificial water accumulation. The last summer, we did the last experiment with the georadar. We checked about 2,000 feet of those tunnels. We wanted to see if there is anything underground. And 300 feet from the entrance, we found out that about three foot below the surface, this yellow surface, there was a structure starting here. And the structure has the shape of a diamond. This is like one chamber. And then there is a second chamber. And then most probably, starting 13 feet, the third one. So when we added the depth, this is how it should look like. The first one, the second one. What do they represent? Well, we will learn this summer, because we're going to be digging right here. So on those uh, uh, flyers, you can find our website address with the daily news, so you can follow the progress, unless you come to Bosnia this summer. <laughs> now, what we can see in today's world that is that uh, mainstream science lacks creativity, lacks imagination, because they rely exclusively on our five physical senses. On the other hand, the spiritual science lacks scientific protocols, scientific methodology. They need to be verified. The future is in combining the two, the spiritual and material science. A year and a half ago, I made an experiment with the six Akashic record readers. Well, for 150 years, there is a notion that, that in the spiritual realm exists spiritual library. And if you can 
tap that vast knowledge. If you can access the library, you can get the information about our past and our future on this planet and in the universe. People who can do that are called Akashic Record readers. Now, I'm speaking. I've interviewed six Akashic Record readers. I applied scientific protocols. I did not tell them what I was going to ask them. And I did ask them about 30 different archaeological sites. From Machu Picchu to Chinese pyramids, Bosnian pyramids. Always the same question. Who, when, how, why? I would not give them more information, but just the name of the location and the photo. Now, more info, of course, in the book, but just the excerpts from the book. I asked them about the labyrinth under the Bosnian pyramids. They were never in Bosnia, they didn't know me, they didn't know what I was going to ask them. So they were not prepared. So they did the reading. And I asked them to give me more info on Bosnian uh, labyrinths. So, reader number one, Nancy, she said, they used the material from the tunnels to build the pyramids. We confirmed that. There was ecology to it, exactly. Catacomb feeling. There is a round center with different tunnels radiating out. You can find different passages. There is a chamber in the center that is more of an open space. Reader number two. Beneath the pyramids are tunnels. They are talking about water. They did get a lot of other resources from under the ground. One of the purposes for the tunnels was for the chosen ones to go from one tunnel to the other. They were working with the energy. Only certain people could travel into pyramids or through these tunnels. With the number three, there are tunnels that were intentionally filled with rocks and stuff to keep people from getting inside. There is a very deep cavern under there that connects to a cavern system under the earth. There are beings that could get up in there, but they don't go there for some reason. Okay. Reader number four. I see beings walking into the tunnels. Down deep is where they actually lived. When you get down deep, it is not going to look like that. So, they will, they will, as you go deeper, it will look more structured, more built, rooms, technological appearance to it. They closed the chambers off and sealed up other chambers and then sealed the outside completely. The ancient alien part of your soul is, well, she's talking about me, is very well aware of these beings. You knew that they had hidden a certain type of technology beyond our current understanding. It's just three, four more slides. Maybe 15. All right. <laughs> Reader number five. There was a healing chamber down there at one point. This was a place where the energy was just right to speed healing of the body. The hallways are about moving the energy in a different place. They use something like a laser to curve out the area. Okay. Reader number six, the tunnels are very extensive. There is a main room. If you continue to the left, you're going to find what you're looking for, peace, no resistance, purpose. You will find artifacts, symbol structures. The tunnels were closed by a later generation because what was in there was sacred to them. Now it's time to discover this. Purpose of underground labyrinth, healing facility to keep what is the most sacred and most valuable to us our health and prolonged life. The last few years, tens of thousands of tourists came to Bosnia from the country, known because of war and violence, late days, corruption, negative news. We want to change that. We want to send the positive news to the world, the tourism, volunteers, you know, beautiful country. We want tens of thousands more tourists. We want private initiative to boom. We want young kids to come and share what we have to offer them. We want not so young to come also, <laughs> in numbers. We want sports team, like this one from Latvia and Europe. 
We want tourists like those from Malaysia who came on the top of the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun, laying down, getting filled up with the energy from the pyramid. Right? Yoga practitioners. We want to build a complex a replica of the pyramid sites with the hotels, museums, healing centers, $100 million. We want to organize another summer camp for volunteers this summer. 2010, 500 volunteers from 30 countries. 2011, from 32 countries. 2012, from 51 countries. And always with a smile. <laughs> In the tunnels above and below the ground, you find more info on our website about the volunteers, how to apply for the summer camp. We want them to help us to clean what is today known as the biggest pyramid covered with soil. So one day can be again uncovered the biggest and the oldest pyramid of all. Thank you very much. continue in 10 minutes. Uh, Professor Sam will be giving college credits for this course. Uh, I would like to mention something before you all take off. Uh, Dr. Sam is funding a lot of this out of his own personal uh, finances. And he does have a nonprofit uh, foundation.